This is Dandelion Dreams Podcast. My name is Julia Mason. This is Hoban Washburn for all you Firefly fans. Um, this is a knitting podcast. Also, um, I like to talk a lot about our farming. We are sheep farmers here in Oregon in the United States. Um, yeah. So it's been two weeks since my last podcast. Uh, last time I had just gotten done with five of the U's. We only have, oops, sorry. The cat's on the bed. He's going to move the camera this whole time just to warn you. Um, so yeah, last episode I had gotten through five of our 11 U's that are landing this year and we had had some mixed success. We had some good easy births and then we had at that point in time we had one really bad <clears throat> birth where we lost both the lambs um, ultimately and this time around we've finished lambing now and we had one more kind of bad birth but um, I managed to save the lambs this time so that was exciting um, I'm doing it again I keep meaning to talk about knitting first and then farming but I can't help myself so if you don't want to hear about farming you can skip ahead but I'm just gonna talk about it so um, anyways I guess I'm too excited to talk about this you that I helped um, she had triplets and oh, I'm talking so fast <laughs> had a lot of coffee today um she had oh also Daisy's not really sleeping and my mom is watching her so I'm hoping she stays happy long enough for me to do this but anyway the you that had troubles she um had gone into labor i was watching um girls at the yarn cafe podcast and i had like a wonderful evening we hadn't had much issues with the sheep that day and my husband and i were just sitting here in bed knitting oh i was knitting and watching podcasts and i was like oh what a relaxing evening this was wonderful Let's go to bed, try and get some sleep before any sheep have any issues, but I'll run out one more time and check before bed, make sure they're all good. Well, Ayu was in labor, but she had, didn't have a water bag, bag presenting or anything. Um, so I figured um, I might as well, but she was really straining. Um, so, and she kept laying down and pushing and really like things were happening, but no water bag. So. It's like, okay, well, I guess I will bring some knitting down here and just watch and see what happens. And I sat there for like at least two hours, which is usually you want to check within an hour of the water bag presenting. You want to reach in and make sure things are coming out right. But because her water bag wasn't presenting, I wasn't really sure what to do. And um, in hindsight, I should have just checked then. But... Anyways, I'll get to that. Um, uh, I just was like, oh, I'm being a nervous Nelly. I will um, just take a little quick sleep for an hour and come back out and check on her. When I came back out, she wasn't progressing and she was really straining and really laboring hard. So I uh, tried to check her, but she was totally closed up wasn't dilating at all and, and I couldn't even get my hand to begin to go in so I was like oh crap what does that mean I have no idea what to do in that situation so I quickly posted uh, on a sheep farmers group the cat just opened the door um, on Facebook which is incredibly helpful if you have any area of interest in your life that you might need advice from more experienced people go on Facebook and join some groups because there's a lot of really knowledgeable helpful people out there so um posted on there and immediately people started commenting that she probably had ring womb which is just a failure to dilate and it's they're not really sure what causes it it's something about um hormones being misinterpreted by the body or something like that is their best guess i think so um they everyone yeah everyone was like uh-oh it sounds like ring womb, which most likely is going to result in needing a C-section. And I was just like, my heart sank. It's like, oh no, like that's not going to be good. And, um, I mean, I know it's different for a lot of people who have pets and things, but like we can't afford to put more than, I don't know, like let's say $300 into a U to save her um, before she no longer is worth saving just financially because it's a business and it's 
our, you know, going to be our livelihood eventually. So, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to just throw a bunch of money at an animal who is then also going to become useless, probably based on like, if she's had this problem in the past, she's probably gonna have it in the future. So anyways, um, if we would have ended up in that situation, we probably would have just put her down humanely and um, maybe tried to save the lambs. I don't know if that would have been reasonable. But anyways, thankfully we didn't have to come to that point. Um, some really helpful people were, they suggested giving her subcutaneous calcium, which is for anybody not medically trained or whatever. Uh, subcutaneous just means under the skin. So you inject fluid under the skin. And uh, the, thankfully we still had calcium uh, in our med supplies, so we gave her 60 cc's of calcium and just waited for I think an hour and a half. We tried to sleep and then went back out. I had my husband come and help me at this point because I was just like kind of a little freaked out and like, ah, we're gonna lose her and just really upset. And um, thankfully, after that time passed, come here, cat, come here, wash, come here, kitty, 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 kitty. So it actually did its thing. It helped relax her tissues and get things going, um, which I think is due in part to the fact that she didn't actually have ring womb truly. She had a malpresented lamb, so nothing was pushing on her cervix to dilate her. So um, the calcium was just enough to relax her tissues and so that I could manually open the cervix later. Um, so we did that and I reached in and I couldn't really, well, for a long time, I was just feeling a really large water bag. Sorry, the cat. Um, but, um, no lambs, which normally you would feel the lamb right there. And so, um, oh brother, cats are silly. Come here, buddy. Um, so I finally, the water bags broke and it was like a dam breaking and I had amniotic fluid go down my sleeve and it was quite a mess. But um, I was then able to reach in and feel the lamb and she was on the opposite side of the pelvis and hadn't even entered the birth canal yet. And she, I couldn't tell what I was feeling at all. It was like, what is that? <laughs> uh, I felt, I, I thought it was a rump, which did didn't make any sense as I was feeling it because I was like, there's no tail. Um, and what is just, what is this? And finally I figured out, well, first I, I, I thought it was a tail, so, or not a tail, I thought it was a rump and I just wasn't feeling the tail. So I was like, okay, I'll, I just need to pull the legs out and pull it out quickly so that it doesn't pinch the umbilical cord and kill the lamb. Um, but I got one leg out and I was like, that's a front leg. That's not a rear leg. So I needed to put it back in and I still was like, what? So I pushed the leg back in. I'm sorry about the cat. I shouldn't include him, but he's so cute. Um, I pushed the leg back in and started to kind of push her back and down because what happened was her head was tucked. Here's the pelvic opening. Head was tucked down like this down here. And um, I had to kind of pull it up and out and she, it was awful because every time the, the, you would contract, it would like bend her neck in half and ugh, it felt horrible. I was just kind of freaking out, but like also excited that I was doing it and things were happening and it was going to work and um, got her head pulled out the correct direction, got her legs pulled out and then out she came. Um, and then she was quickly followed by a, another ewe lamb, I believe presenting correctly and then last she had a ram lamb who was coming out backwards so I pulled him out quickly and everything was good and the lambs were all fine she has um the ewe the, that came out first and came out incorrectly uh w was developed in the womb head down like that so she was really stiff and had her head stuck down like this and couldn't nurse so I had to lift her up and help her nurse and everything and um she did all right now I don't want to get ahead of myself so anyways um I had to help them nurse quite a lot because the ewe's udder was like a cow's udder it was so ow ow full ow you're being mean and um in her her teats were like thumbs they were huge which in high, I don't know if we're, I don't know about keeping any lambs out of her just because 
that's really inconvenient to have letters like that because the lambs needed a lot of help figuring out what was what and it was just not a good setup. So anyhow, I um, things were going quite well for about a week after that and then two or three days ago, I um, was, and I've been watching them very closely to try and monitor and make sure that everyone's getting enough food. Everything seemed to be going okay and then a couple of days ago it was like, okay, she's officially not doing as well as her siblings, One of the one that was crooked and uh, who I affectionately call Quasimodo, but um, she was just a little slower than her siblings at, you know, running up and then as they were nursing she was just kind of there trying to get in but couldn't couldn't make it in so anyway um, she I pulled her off and brought her in the house uh, tried to give her a bottle which she didn't really know what to do with that and she was shivering and I took her temperature and she had a fever so she I think just got a little bit um, just a little under the weather from being hungry and hydrated from not eating enough and then um, probably started to come down with a little bit of pneumonia. So we give her antibiotics and, um, this has not been a good year. Like last year lambing, we didn't have any problems, thankfully, cause I was pregnant and really, really nauseous and didn't have the energy to deal with anything. And I wasn't even supposed to really handle amniotic fluids. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had a really easy lambing season, pretty much no issues. We lost one lamb to a coyote. And other than that, it was pretty uneventful. This year has been the opposite. So, um, we have her in the house and she, that was, that day I was home alone with the girls, which was really hard trying to keep an eye on everything. Cause we have goats having babies. We had a goat a few days ago, have her, her kids outside and they were their The buck we use this year is a, uh, boar, which is an African breed who they don't do very well in the cold, wet weather that we have. So, those kids were really weak. We had to bring them inside and warm them up. It's just been a whole lot. So after I brought that you in, I gave her antibiotics. I gave her, what else did I give her? I think I gave her electrolytes and I tubed her. So you run a rubber, rubber hose, little thin one down to their stomach, um, inserted electrolytes and fluids to try and hydrate her and she's perked up and doing a lot better now but now she has scours which is another name for diarrhea um and she was she was drinking bottles of milk and now I, I don't know if it's because we also had a goat born that day that she first came in and was sick and he was born with white muscle disease which is a selenium deficiency because we're a pretty selenium deficient region and we had issues where the vet it's a, it's a controlled substance, selenium, which makes no sense to me because it's not like a drug. It's not like you can get high off of it or anything. It's, it's just really dangerous if you overdose it. But if an animal has white muscle disease, it's rapidly dying. So in my mind, I'm like, if I, I'd rather run the risk of overdosing it and killing it than not being able to treat it without a vet and having it die in the meantime. But anyway, whatever. Um, so we eventually did make it to the vet after calling a bunch of people and finding, finally, finally finding someone who could see us and, um, got the shot for that. And that thankfully the goat survived that, but now I don't know, it's been like two or three days of them in the house and they've just been really struggling. Um, their spirits are up now, which is good. It means they're feeling better. They're starting to like toddle around and be fine except for now they have scours, which is just a name for livestock diarrhea. And so, and that's really serious because it quickly dehydrates them. So we're continuously, continuously having to tube them and keep them hydrated. So, um, it's been a mess and not fun at all. <laughs> I mean, a small part of me kind of likes the hands-on part of vetting, but I really hate the stress of an animal being sick and not feeling well and not knowing if it's going to pull through and um, just, yeah, it's miserable. Hey, you guys. Yeah. You poor little sickies. You get better, little dudes. I don't know. You want milks and all you get is electrolytes. You're stressing me out. Hey, baby. 
babies. That's medicine on their heads, not blood. So cute. Um, so we're treating them with um, Pepto Bismol, and I've heard of Benadryl being used with success. We're gonna try that and see if that works to help the inflammation of the gut. So, anyways, um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully I will have a happy update next time and it's it's really hit or miss with scours I mean animals can easily die from it so I don't know we'll see I'm I want to be hopeful but I'm also I don't want to get my hopes up because it can be really disappointing so yeah we'll see just keep treating him um and I think that's pretty much all of the farmy updates I have I mean, I could tell you about every birth that we had, but that would be ridiculous because most of them went pretty well. And with the day that the goat was born with white muscle and the lamb got sick, we also had another set of twins born, goat twins, and I had to deal with all of that and getting them in the barn. And and I so Nicholas had to come home from work in the middle of the day, which was a big bummer because he's now like a couple days behind in a job. And anyways. So yeah, it was a little stressful, but overall I'm still feeling positive and glad that lambing and mostly kidding's over. I have one goat left and she doesn't look as close to ready to kid as the other ones were looking. So yeah, um, hopefully that wasn't too boring or in depth. Um, from here on out, farm updates should be a lot shorter because lambing is definitely the most uh, intense season. Uh, and we'll be taking all of our sheep to lease properties this summer where they will just be grazing and hopefully there will be no issues. So yeah, that I hope is soon, <laughs> but I don't, I mean, it's March, so it'll be a month or two before we, um, get them off to the lease properties. So yeah. Um, all right. I will talk about knitting now. I will start with, let's see my giant bag of things. Oh, there's the cat. Um, let's see, my camera placement's lame because you can't see him down here being cute. Um, all right, my first finished object, might be my only finished object actually, is, oh yeah, this is a fun story. So I did a test knit for Unicorn Designs and I didn't have, I think I talked a little bit about not really having yarn for it. And I had tried, started, cast it on with this weird sock yarn and it looked really odd. So she actually was really sweet and um, talked to a friend about sending me out some yarn to do her pattern. And her sweet friend Debbie sent me some yarn from Washington. And uh, yeah, it was so nice and awesome. And she sent me this little card with it and she sent me an extra skein and she's knit life on um, Ravelry and she sent me an extra skein and this is um, Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino. Here's a tag from it. I should have taken pictures and things but I was too anxious to cast on. So anyways, um, Daisy has worn this once so there's a bit of spit up on the back side of it. but. Oh, and it's all wrinkly because it's been in a bag, but I need to lay it out flat and get some good pictures of it. And here it is. It's a cute little baby sweater and it's 12 month size. Um, I need to weave in, actually that's not even the end. I, I wove in the ends as I went along, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, it's just a little bit of color work at the bottom and top and sleeves. And this yarn is so soft and really nice. I think it's actually 55% um, merino, 33% uh, microfiber, and 12% cashmere. So um, I'm not sure what microfiber is exactly like on a chemical level, but it's uh, very soft and I think it's machine washable, but I probably will hand wash it because I took the time to make it, so I might as well take care of it. Um, hi, kitty. Um, I wonder if you can hear his purrs. He's purring very loudly. So I made it um, 
when I did the color work initially, I was struggling because my, my first color work project, the Aim True Hat, was a very um, toothy yarn and it was really perfect for a first time color work project because it made it really easy on me. I really didn't struggle that much with floats and, well, and I, I ow, caught floats really often and I also just, it worked really well, the yarn did, so I just didn't have to struggle that much with it. This uh, yarn is really soft and lovely, but it's not very grippy, so it had a bit of a hard time with bunching at the bottom initially. Um, and so it, it, I thought it was going too tight here, so then I went way overkill going loose up here and ended up looking just stupid, like really bad right in here. So what I ended up doing was once I had gotten the body knit, I looked back at it and I was really unhappy with it but I didn't want to rip back at that point. So I took a very small crochet hook. Oh, I left some things over there. I'm gonna try and get them without disturbing the camera too much. I also forgot my coffee over there, which I obviously need because I'm so low energy and talking so slowly today. Oh, let's see. Meow. Okay, ah, back. Oh, and this is so sad. My cup, my cup broke what you get for having little kids but um I don't really know if that was necessary all this wandering around just to show you this it's a small crochet hook fancy right I just took this and slowly pulled the blue yarn tight like getting the correct tension on my stitches and then leaving the correct length of floats behind. So it was like kind of a, um, close to the same amount of time maybe as re-knitting it, um, but it was more controlled and I was able to like, I don't know, examine it as I went along and kind of do surgery and reverse engineer this little bit and make it the stitches evened out. Um, and it worked out and I ended up having these really long this really long tail here it was actually longer than that and I cut it and just tied it off in the back because I was like it looks better I don't really care that there's a tag or a tag a tail in the middle um that's not the end of the world so um yeah other than that it's been it went really well the top color work I just did a lot more um I would knit three stitches no I would knit one color and then I would stretch it out when I would do the float every time and that made it much more even and I just didn't have any problems with the color work at the top really so I yeah that was probably the way to do it <laughs> so I know now and it's a little I feel like I have a little bit better grasp of color work after this even though it's a super easy simple thing um, but I think it turned out really cute. Um, like I said, it's a 12 month size and Daisy is only five months old. So, um, she, I put it on her and she looked adorable, but it was huge. So it's like a little dress on her. Um, and did I mention she sent me an extra ball of the same type of yarn? Um, but it was a contrast, well, a third contrasting color just in case, cause the yardage was very close. I only had little teeny tiny leftovers afterwards I was like oh no I'm gonna run out this is so little here um but thankfully it worked out and I didn't have to use the orange actually the pattern calls for this bottom ribbing being the main color but um to try and not run out of yarn I did it in the contrasting color and I'm really glad that I did because I think it would have run out of yarn so um, and how many yards were these guys? I don't know if it says on these things, 200, or excuse me, uh, 125 meters, 50 grams. So yeah, um, really happy with that. It was a fun little knit. It wasn't, uh, terribly difficult. Um, but I think her test knit concludes tomorrow. So I'm glad it's done on time and, ah, that was, oh, and I ended up actually taking, several days off of knitting, not all consecutively, but just throughout this last couple of weeks because of animal issues and um, 
we had some really nice weather on a weekend when my husband was home so we did a lot of like outdoor work together and finally trimmed our horses feet and things like that that needed to be done so it was a little bit of a bummer I didn't get nearly as much knitting done as I wanted to the other thing that I worked on I almost wish I hadn't divided this because I kind of want to show you the what it looked like before I don't know where I put the other piece sorry I got interrupted again uh Nicholas was calling me he is he took Felicity to a like propagation fair today for fun it's the weekend and he was gonna take her on a little date they're gonna go learn about propagating fruit trees and um yeah I didn't really want to leave the house today. I really wanted to go with them, but I didn't want to leave the house just in case I needed to. I probably need to tube the lambs and stuff some more, the ones that are sick. But anyways, so the other thing that I worked on was my sister commissioned a little project from me. She wanted some um, acrylic socks that are DK weight so that they would be warm, cozy, durable, um, and machine washable and all that. And so I knit them up in a tube in like this initially just one big long tube and then I divided them and put toes on the end I'm just doing a very small ribbed cuff she doesn't want it to be very long the socks to be very long so I'm doing a small ribbed cuff I was going to do a contrasting cuff as well but the yarn is kind of um, scratchy and stiff the contrasting color and it did not work for a cuff. The cuff was not stretchy at all, so I redid it like this. Um, so I'm going to just bind this off because this is the only little tail I have left. And yeah, so I have those two done. Just need to do the cuffs and the heels, and I'll be all done. So I should be able to finish that today. And um, I mostly knitted this either sitting in the barn watching the U's or just walking around outside following Felicity while she would play. So it was a good outdoor project that I wasn't really too worried about having to focus on what I was doing because it was just a tube. So that was a fun way of doing socks. I think I'll probably do them that way for a while just because I really like being able to mindlessly knit something while I walk around and not have to stop. Say, oh, I gotta do a heel now and um, casting on a second one. That also totally gets rid of your whole second sock syndrome because it's all just one big tube. So just cut it in half and um, do your heels and toes. So, and when you're in the that mindset of like, I'm doing heels and toes and they're all kind of the same, then yeah, it's easy because I did an afterthought heel. So yeah. Um, so that was another simple, easy little project that I got done. And I, um, on the thread of this designer, she's doing, excuse me, doing a cowl for uh, the Sheep Shuffle mitts, or their fingerless gloves, I believe. And um, it's a really cute little color work fingerless glove. And she had a thing she'd posted on Instagram about, um, f I guess, like getting the pattern for free if you'd signed up by a certain time. And I was just like, couldn't resist because it's such a cute pattern. I didn't even notice it was the same person at first. Um, like initially, I was just like, oh my gosh, I love that. And then I was like, oh, hey, it's her. I'm already doing one of her projects. But um, uh, so I ordered yarn for that. And I guess I will share that with you, I think. So that was a finished object and my work in, one work in progress. My second work in progress, I guess I'll cover that. I'm all over the place. Sorry. I'll show you my little work in progress. And it's just my second um mountain rain sock and it has the markers for where I'm going to eventually place the heel and I only have like um I think three or four more repeats of the pattern to go and then the cuff and then that's done just then gotta add the heel and these are on my lovely chow gu lace red lace um 2.25 millimeter and um yeah so that'll be nice to get those done so I can cast on more socks. I always feel like, I don't know, I don't want to have too many socks on at once. I need to kind of get them done, otherwise they'll just languish. So, but I'm anxious to knit all of the fun sock yarns I have. But, so that's that. My final, I don't think I brought, oh I did. Final work in progress was the shawl that I, I literally haven't put one more stitch in this. So I'll just let you see it. It's a shawl, it's kind of stripey. I'm really curious to see how it'll look wearing it, but it is just gonna sit 
and wait until I have time for it because um, it's not my most exciting thing in the world. So now that I am done with this, I'm going to start the knit along and I ordered yarn specifically for it. Um, and I need to probably knit that next just, but I didn't, I resisted casting on because I wanted to show you my yarn all cute and caked up and in its packaging. So this one, I, this is the base color and I just ordered this from, I love knitting, no, love knitting, love knitting. I think I've been saying I love knitting and I think it's just love knitting.com and, um, Phil Folk, Phil Dar 50. And it's, can't even remember, I ordered it a little while ago. 75% uh, wool and 25% polyamide and yeah, just a basic sock yarn. But I liked it. Um, it's supposed to be a white base and this isn't exactly white, but it's whitish. And I think it'll look nice with what I have in here. So I ordered this from Etsy from Etsy. I will share her stuff with y'all because she's awesome. X-Ray Ann. I don't know if that's focusing good enough for you guys to see. Oh, well, anyways. Um, X-Ray Ann.etsy.com. And she had really, really good prices um, from what I could see on her shop. At least I was very happy with what I got. And it comes with a little cute stamped thank you and your receipt and this is exciting. So I have a lovely little rainbow in here and she had like a, a vibrant rainbow option and I think they called this autumn? Was it? I can't remember what it said. Maybe it'll be on here. Sorry I am so distracted today or like my brain's all over. Yeah Mini Skeins Autumn Sampler, set of eight hand-dyed fingering sock weight yarn, 100% superwash merino, which is great because it's a sock yarn, but it's 100% wool, which is fun. I would like to get into less superwashes eventually, but I, uh, you, you know, I'm not going to be a, a stickler. But anyways, um, since it's not socks, I don't really care about it not having the polyamide in there. So there's that. Oh, I'm missing a color in the middle, I think. Oh no, how am I going to show you guys this? Ugh. There's so many yarns. Um, let's see, three more. So many. I mean, to me, that's a lot. Yay! They're so cute. I love them. I really love them. They're so pretty. And I like that they're not the like really really crazy bright rainbow it's like a muted rainbow yeah I just, i'm just looking at them in the camera because they're pretty and cute and i want to knit them now um and they're very soft they're softer than the this thing but this is not bad but they are softer than it and since the color work is mostly white on the outside i guess my hands will be mostly touching this so that'll be cool um and i'm really excited to knit with them and they're just adorable. I love mini skeins, but like mini cakes are just adorable. It just looks delicious. Um, yeah, I am really excited about them. So now that you've seen them, I can officially start knitting with them um, because I don't need to show them off anymore. All these adorable. And there's like, I think, I can't remember how many grams the whole lot was all together. I don't know if it'll say on here, but I think it was either 100 or 200, which I know there's a big difference, but I feel like it was 200, but I don't want to promise that. But altogether, it was like $23. So either whether it was 100 or 200, it's still a very good price. Um, and just really beautiful saturated colors. Um, so, and he's got a little tag. And yeah, 55 yards each. Oh, here we go. 18 grams each. And there's eight of them. Yeah, so cute. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with those. And I'm excited to cast that on for the cow. And I, yeah, I mean, I've kind of like sort of casually done cows, but not really, 
not really bought something specifically to do a cow before, so this will be fun. And it came in its own little bag. And that is my first stash enhancement. That was I was very excited to get all of that. I really love that. And my second stash enhancement is right here. This is my birthday present that I bought for myself from my husband, if that makes sense. I knew this is what I wanted, but I knew that if he bought it for me, he wouldn't really know the right set to get. Um, and even with all of my like research and stuff, I, after I bought it, I was like, oh, maybe I should have got the four inch set, but I don't know. It's the five inch set and I've, I think I've been using a five inch set and I've been happy with, not five inch set, but five inch individual needles and I've been happy with them. So I don't see why it should be any different now, but, um, I could also just buy a couple of four inch ones for individual projects if I need them. But, um, I got the smaller set. Um, I heard someone say that they didn't really like the red lace for the larger sizes, like beyond five and a half, which I wish the set would went to five and a half. It goes to five. So I might buy the five and a half, but then you have to get new cables, I guess, because the, the cables for the, this size range are a little bit smaller than the cables for the bigger size range, which I do not have. But, um, yeah, I already knew that I really enjoyed Chiaogu red lace needles, so I don't really have much else to say about these other than that I'm happy with them and I like them. And I knitted with them this morning and they're, they almost have a different sound to them. I know that sounds weird, but like these feel heavier and more solid than these. I think these are hollow. So I kind of almost prefer the the solidly attached cable ones, the way they sound and feel and how smooth they are. And they like these almost have like a brushed finish. I know this is all very like picky, but um I kind of like this a little bit better. Uh however, I think these are going to work great. Um I'll probably just continue to supplement my needle habit with the, the solid attached needles here and there. Um, but I think it'll be really nice to have a base set that I can go from here. So what, you know, no matter what I'm doing, as far as below five millimeter, I will have something at least that isn't the bamboo that I really dislike. The problem is this project, why I haven't touched it mostly is because it has these needles and in the size four and below, or between sizes three and four and a half, maybe, I don't really mind them. They work all right. But the larger sizes of these bamboo is just so slow to work with. So I've just set this aside because it's not very fun. So I need to probably get myself that size before I really start picking that up again. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I thought about bringing out my yarn that I'm going to knit my sweater out of again, um, just because I haven't showed it in a little while and I'm thinking of casting it on now, now that I have a broader variety of needles to work with. But I guess I'll do, I'll probably do the Sheep Shuffle Cow just more monogamously and get it done. Um, also, I didn't knit this sweater. It's store-bought. It's actually... I think a hand-me-down and my sister probably got it as a hand-me-down too before she handed it down to me. So yeah, I'm going to probably do the sheep shuffle cal and then knit myself a sweater. Hopefully, um, it's, I, I was going to do the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, but now I'm considering switching to the improv sweater. Um, I don't know the idea of doing something that teaches me more about I don't know, broad sweater theory sounds interesting. And also the fact that I can kind of customize it, which I mean, I could customize the other pattern, but it's more designed to be customized. So I'm interested to try that. So we'll see, I gotta decide. If you've tried either the Tin Can Knits um, Flax Light or the Improv Sweater and you have an opinion about either of them, please comment below and let me know what you think. Um, that would be cool. And I also just really appreciate um, everyone 
you guys watching is awesome and commenting and all the kind things you've had to say has been like very heartwarming and exciting and yeah I just really appreciate you all and um it's yeah exciting and crazy and cool and thank you for watching you guys can find me on Instagram as Dandelion Dreams Podcast and on fat Facebook as Dandelion Dreams Knits and on what is the other platform? Ravelry <laughs> um, as Northwest Hippie Mama. So N W H I P P I E Mama. And I should probably make a Ravelry group, I guess, at some point. That would be a thing to do. Um, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. That would really help me out and it would be awesome to hear from you guys and be able to keep up with you more. And I just, yeah, I really appreciate you watching. So thank you guys. Bye bye. Does anyone else like to smell their cat? Do you like smelling your cat? He smells so good. He smells like happiness. He doesn't like me right now. <laughs>